Weird Science is the revolution. Spider-Man Shadow of the Green Goblin, number one, written by J.M. DeMatteis, Michael Sta or Stay, period, mm. Maria on Weird. art. I like the art. It's I'm good. not aware of this artist. After I saw in my previous show about it, I went and looked up some things, and he had some pretty cool art. And in this, he does a really good retro style, not really the style of art that I saw that he normally does. I will say, that in a lot of the art he does online, he likes to draw bosoms. Is what he likes to draw. Just putting it out there, he draws that uh, a lot. <laughs> Check uh, it colors out. by Chris Sotomayor and DC's Joe Carmagna on letters. This is Di Matteis. Kind of going back, it's different than some of the other books that do this, like the Peter David stuff and whatnot. This is going back to before... Norman Osborn is the Green Goblin. You end up having Peter has just become Spider-Man and Uncle Ben has just died. But to me, it doesn't fit in that way that the others are. Okay, I want to tell more of the story or I want to finish this story. It's just kind of going back and giving you a story so far about the proto-goblin, the guy who was Niels Van Adder, who ended up was experimented on by Norman before he perfected or somewhat perfected the goblin serum so you get that and it's kind of a weird play i don't mind this i thought it was pretty good though it dragged a little because there's a lot of narration and i don't know why jam de Mateus went with this yeah because of the idea of he, he says like what you need to do i mean you do at the beginning hey everybody it's me peter parker i want to tell you a story from my past and and goes through a lot into saying some of this is what I remember. Some of it is some other people's memory. And some of it might be completely made up. But let's go and do it. I think the narration, for the most part, for the issue, should stop there. It should then go and tell the story. And yeah, when we're jumping between things, obviously, when you're going to say, okay, my parents died, then I end up getting bit by a spider, I was a jerk, and then Uncle Ben, that's fine too. Like when you get to that. But at that point, I think you pull the narration out because what you end up doing is every page, it almost feels like Peter telling the story can't stop and and let the story. It's like he has to butt in. It feels like it is butting in, right? It is because it it interrupts the dialogue uh, bubbles and and, and it kind of throws off the pacing for me because I'm having to figure out, am I reading this or am I reading this or do I read this first or the second? And maybe, like, sometimes when they do the narration, you'll have a little spider there. So, no, it's weird to not, because the way it's played out, there are times when a narration bubble overlaps on a, you know, a word bubble, and you're not sure who's talking. Yeah, that, well, that's the, uh, that's the uh, letterer's job to place the bubbles. So we're, uh, it's a lot of that. Yeah, and even the the bubbles themselves may be a harder square. I hate we rarely talk about letters, right? But the narration, it's like a a soft rectangle. It's kind mm-hmm. of, and it ha- it does have a little bit of an outline of red, but not maybe a, not a white background, a different color. Yeah, work. maybe like it have a. I don't know, but something. But also, when you're reading a comic just naturally, and you're going from left to right, and you read a word bubble. You kind of want to get to the other word bubbles in that conversation without having to run into narration boxes. The narration boxes should be, you know, above, below, whatnot. Yeah, they're in the mix. Yeah, it ends up right there in the mix. And like I said, it it really does feel like it's butting in. And because, and I'll, I'll tell you how I realized that it really was kind of taking me out of the whole deal is now that we're talking about it, I'm looking, I didn't recognize in that first scene all the rats. That are in the scene. Yeah, I just saw that too. It's disgusting. They're everywhere. Because I was reading the narration that's all on the top, along with the word bubbles, and just kind of going, seeing that you have this guy, Niels Van Adder, Proto Goblin. He's already been turned. Just almost looks like the Red Hulk, even at this point, or a demon. And he has this phony family that he set up, manic. They're like mannequins, yeah, creepy. Eating this food that is rotten and stuff like that. But we're not going to go full out into this whole deal, but. You do feel bad for this Niels, this proto-goblin. He's had everything snatched away from him by Norman, and he wants revenge. That's a lot. Now, there is somebody on the outskirts in the shadows that's involved as well that wants to get back at Norman as well. And we'll get to that by the end. But in the meantime, you do kind of go through some greatest hits 
of Spider-Man. And you go and see, you know, that he needs money because Aunt May and him, they're not really talking about things because they don't want to bring stuff up that upset each other. Aunt May has a lot of bills piling up. Peter, he wants to, you know, make some money, but the wrestling's kind of gone. And now that J. Jonah Jameson has declared him a menace and the Daily Bugle, nobody will hire him to do anything. And this is pre Peter, you know, taking pictures and things like that because it's very quick over there. So there's some fun things. Like he goes off to Maxie Schiffman, his agent. You know, there's yeah, some callback guy. deals, right? So he goes and he's like, man, you know, son, nobody wants you in this town, but I'll get you something. He gets him a job at, to do a birthday party. And when you get to that point, this kid is kind of a jerk. <laughs> kid, they say he's Teddy. The art there looked like he was a little older, but still, he's like this kid. You're not the real Spider-Man. You just have a costume on him. Peter's trying to do all these things. I swear, at one point, Peter lifts a car, and the kid's like, oh, man, that's a cardboard car. You you try it. Yeah, have him go over. Or have it that it's their car, the family's car. Like, do that. Even have the, the mother, oh, my God. Well, the kid's acting out, and you find out that the kid's dad had just died. Peter feels bad and starts zipping him around town, you know, possibly killing him by the end. But he, there's nice things <laughs> in this. Gets him, throw, takes, throws him from the top of a building. Yeah, he just throws him. There. <laughs> this is what you get for questioning. Yeah, me, really. Punk. This is what you get. Or he's starting to play. And like, look, I, I've been trying to get this trick where you fall off this bridge and then I zip you and catch yep. you. Or I save you at the last section. Second, mm, his neck breaks. <laughs> he's like, oh no, I better not do that later with Gwen. Peter Stacey. comes back and gets the mom's number. Exactly. I he's thought the mom was her. hitting on him. But uh-huh. yeah, so you have all this going on, and and then at the end, he doesn't take the money. Like everything's nice. At one point, he stops a guy who is robbing an old lady. A junkie. Snatch. Yeah, junkie. And and he he remembers the kid that he put into a coma. Attraction. I don't know what that comic they were referencing. Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, family Amazing number Spider-Man three. Family number Whatever three. We'd have to see where right uh, near the beginning it seems that he didn't know his strength and punched a guy. And then they may have then expanded this to show that this kid was hurt. I don't know if they showed it in the original, but he did end up punching a guy and realized that I don't know my own strength, so he can't fight this guy, but he's really mad because this guy pulls a gun on him. It's like Uncle Ben. He's getting triggered, but he can't do it. So, again, there's some things going on that are nice enough, but it, it just feels like you're just being told old stories instead of it feeling like you're in the story itself and it's the narration it's really the narration because then we get harry harry is dating gwen norman comes out and it's like you know later on baby we're gonna have kids but they'll wipe them out like damn that nick spencer but you end up where he's really like norman comes out and he's hugging and rubbing on gwen stacy oh, really yeah. he's touching her, her cheeks and stuff gwen's mom's sick and then Harry says, well, my mom's dead. I think he's trying to one up her. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, my mom's dead. And like, oh, Harry, that's fine. And then Norman comes out and says, listen, I told your dad anything you need. Money's no object. I will help out. And then you have Harry. Thanks, dad. You're the best. Who asked you, kid? He like is ready to backhand Harry because he said he's a great guy. And then they go off and it's like. Everything's a whirlwind. You just go from scene to scene. But again, I like the art. It's nice enough. You get to see Gwen stick up for herself at a party. Then you get the Proto Goblin, who's after Harry, comes to get Harry. I want Harry Osborne. You figure that at this point, we've gotten the idea that it is because of what Norman did to him. You know, he's going to grab Harry's kid. Yeah, you let my kid, I'll take yours, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, but we find out at the end it's a little more than that. But Spider-Man fights the Proto-Goblin. At one point, he's afraid to fight back. Harry thinks that Spider-Man's bad because of the papers. It's okay. It's an extended scene, though. It really does go on for a while. But then in the meantime, you do end up having Peter, you know, get beat up a bit. He allows the Proto-Goblin to beat him up because he doesn't want to hurt him. He's afraid to hurt him. He punches him one time and thinks that he actually crippled him. So he runs He's like, over. hey, are you, are you all right, giant monster? Hey, giant monster, <laughs> red guy, are you okay? <laughs> I am, and I'm going to beat the crap out of you more. Yeah, and I'm and not going to fight ready. back anymore. Yeah, because then he doesn't want to fight back, which is odd. Yeah. Uh, or even lead him away because he is. He's doing millions of dollars in damage. Proto-Goblin, if he's not paying attention to Peter, he goes after Harry. Uh-huh. So he's like, oh, so 
we find he goes back. Aunt May sees that Peter's beat up. I swear to God, it looks like in one panel that Aunt May is about to slap the crap out of Peter. She pulls her her arm back. Yeah, well, he, she pushes his hand off of her oh, that's shoulder, but there, yeah. the way it looks when you see it, you just see that it's like, I'm going to slap you silly. She's going to haul off and wing him. And they're both, it's because they're not talking about Uncle <laughs> Ben's death. They're making up jokes and yeah. things like that, that they're not really talking. Aunt May's very stressed. Yeah. So it is this whole thing. Really, I mean, if you go, it's it's kind of lost a bit in the translation with all the narration, but it is about families. It really is. It's it's Peter and Aunt May trying to figure out how they're going to go forward with Uncle Ben. Dead. You end up having Harry and Norman that Norman just thinks it's a weakness to show that he loves his son. We have Gwen Stacy and her mom's sick. And we have the proto goblin who has lost his family because of what Norman's did. So it's all these family type things. I think it might get better. I don't mind this. I think it could be pretty good. That narration, though, has got to stop. you got to lay back. But at the end, to go with the family deal, too, you end up seeing the proto-goblin. Niels comes back to this run-down, crappy apartment, whatever, and he's missing his family. I want my family back, and that's where you see the person step out of the shadows. Luckily, she says a little more because I had no idea who it was, and she's like, oh, you, you need to finish this job. You need to get Harry. You need to get my son. And then you're like, oh, my goodness. And at that point, you have Harry's like looking at things, Norman, and all that, looking at, you know, the, the place. So she's alive and she wants Harry probably just to screw with Norman. And it's probably some other wackiness going on. It's probably like, a, I don't know, clone or something. Some weird thing. Whoever. Or but just she's been be dead crazy. forever, yeah. basically. Yeah. Right? yeah. So maybe we'll see some weird stuff going on or what it was. But, yeah, I like the art. I think the story might be cool, but at this point, it still feels like, like I said, you're just being told, hey, this is what happened before. You're going to fill in a little blanks, but it doesn't feel as cool or necessary as some of the other things like this were. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, what would you give it? Yeah, I, I, I since you're going for an old school feel, I would have went with uh, um, thought bubbles rather than a lot of the narration i think that would have been cool to do but there's so many and peter isn't in all the scenes that's what the weird you know what i mean like yeah, half the time he's not even in the scene and you're you're getting it's one of my biggest pet thieves in that narration box is just just you, you already have the art you have the dialogue that's enough set the scene let it let it do its thing and because of that, I mean, I do like the art. I like the story overall, I think. I'd, I'd, I'd give it a seven and a half. I'm, I'm still giving it a seven. Interested I, I in still it. liked it. Here's the problem, too. And it's weird play. Because like you said, usually the narration box is there. And you're like, dude, just let the art tell. Mm -hmm. But the weird thing about most of the narration is Peter just kind of repeating, man, I was upset then. Or, man, I, you, you thought I should take the money. Well, I wouldn't take it now. Like, it's all this, like, oh, yeah. man, I was sad. Or I'm, proud or, of, I'm proud of Norman or Harry or whoever. Like, as yeah. he's telling the story, but it doesn't feel like it doesn't I feel right. I was lucky. I am proud. Yeah, that's what it all is. Even at the one point, he's like, I wish I could have helped more. And, I, hey, this was constructive. I'm looking at every page where yeah. violence, it's been part and parcel of my life. Like, it's you horrifying. don't really need that. You don't really need that sort of thing, just tell the story and then maybe a bookend of him saying, well, you know, I was a little upset at that point. Like, it's fine when he's saying, when him and Aunt May are, are making jokes and in the narration he's saying, we just couldn't talk about Uncle Ben, so we did this, that's fine. But when you're doing the scenes, I think, when Peter isn't in them, and even at one point, he's narrating at a point because you're telling this, oh, I didn't even know them here. But I would know them so like it's just too much. But yeah, seven though. I, I still I still liked it. It's just it kinda got Yeah, I like when these are older older writers and I think you do come back and do stuff. And that's so. why I wanted to like it more. Is is really why I was a little frustrated with that. It's just I think that this could be really cool. Weird science is the revolution.